Now, our next award recipient has dedicated herself to fighting human trafficking. Now, and while you might think this is a problem that only really happens in urban and big city areas, Christina Sambor has shined a light on that problem in her home state of North Dakota. Since 2015, Christina, an attorney by trade, has been on the front lines of fighting human trafficking in the state of North Dakota. She's worked with Youth Works, a nonprofit homeless, runaway, trafficked, and struggling youth uh, organization that helps uh, youth across the state of North Dakota. She also has basically helped them by helping them set up training and technical assistance programs. She also worked with Call to Freedom, a direct service agency in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and is assisting in the development of the East River Human Trafficking Task Force in that state. In 2014, Christina was awarded a prestigious Bush Fellowship. Now, she used that grant to gain even more experience and some more training in order to become a more effective leader in the fight against trafficking in the state and the region. Now, this grassroots coalition that she headed was successful in gaining state and federal financial support to start the North Dakota Human Trafficking Task Force in 2016. Now, in addition to all that professional work, it should also be noted that during her time on campus, Christina was very instrumental in planning the very first big event. And if you don't know what that is, it's a day-long community service project in which hundreds of students, sometimes bordering on a thousand, go out into the community for the day and do good works. So Christina, for your very important work in helping victims of human trafficking and for your belief that we can all find a cause and a community that does something about it, please come forward to accept your Young Alumni Achievement Award. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you so much for having me this evening. I am um, overwhelmed to be part of this evening's uh, program. I will say that it is not on my to-do list of life to follow up a funny rocket scientist in speaking. <laughs> so thanks for whoever put the program together <laughs> and put me up after her. Um, but anyway, um, one, of the, one of the things that really uh, cracked me up about this whole process was uh, the, the Alumni Association was nice enough to write a very uh, wonderful article about some of the work I've done here in North Dakota. And uh, one of the paragraphs in the Alumni Review talked about how I had found my new career working on human trafficking to be so much more rewarding than the soul-sucking uh, efforts at private practice of law. And the magazine came out basically in the same week that I opened my new law firm. So um, I do, in fact, enjoy <laughs> my career of choice. Um, and, uh, and that's one of the things that I actually am so grateful um, to the state of North Dakota and to the University of North Dakota about is that I have had the opportunity to come here, um, come back to North Dakota after receiving a graduate education and not only um, have the opportunity to address an issue like human trafficking, but also to come into a supportive community that's helped me launch uh, my own business, which is really exciting. So at age 36, I'm now on kind of the third iteration of my career, um, and I'm enjoying all of it. So I want to start um, by thanking my family, uh, my husband Nick, who's here, my mother and father-in-law, uh, my mother Barb, my dad Ken, my sister Steph, um, my nephews, Callan, Charlie, and Ellis. If you hear a pterodactyl in the room, it's not in fact a dinosaur, it's just Ellis's calling, call, calling card. So, uh, <clears throat> and then two of my best friends, Sarah and Erica, uh, come here to, to join me. Hi, Ellie. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, when I look back, I really credit my understanding of what it meant to pursue a career to my mother and father. Uh, my mom is just recently retired from a 35-year career in working in corrections, in particular with um, oppressed and disadvantaged women. So she was, re when she retired, she was the director of women's services at the Department of Corrections. My father similarly worked for over 30 years in wetlands conservation and waterfall biology on both a national and international level. And so really, from the get-go, I understood that your career was meant to be something that was a reflection of part of who you were that you weren't just looking for a job, that you were really looking for a way to make an impact in the world. And that was something that I carried with me um, throughout my whole life so far, my very long 36 years that I've been on the planet. Um, but I took that 
I think that belief with me to UND and I had really geeked out over an AP government course that I took in high school, really got infatuated with the legislative process and um, nerdy things like that. And so I, I really uh, was excited to pursue a political science degree at UND um, and to hopefully be involved in politics and public policy someday. Um, and when I got to UND, I was provided a wonderful opportunity on so many levels beyond the great instruction that I received in the classroom. Um, I remember distinctly, and I think there's a DG table here if I'm not mistaken. Okay, hi. Right? So, um, snapping is a DG thing. So, um, so I'm walking on campus and I'm this like freshman from Bismarck and I like see these girls just like walking with these black shirts on with these, you know, a triangle and a, you know, I didn't know what they were, Greek symbols on their shirt made out of rhinestones. And I was like, I got to get <laughs> whatever is going on with those ladies. And so, um, so I didn't rush my, the first semester, but I ended up going through the COB, the continuous open bidding process, and was welcomed into Delta Gamma. And I cannot tell you the amount of grace and composure that I learned. Um, I was really proud that my house, while I was on campus, was consistently um, with the top GPA. Um, I still go on trips every other year with my five best friends from Delta Gamma, and we recently went to Key West this spring. Um, and then my younger sister rushed um, in a couple years later, uh, which led to one of our biggest fights, if I can just give you a quick aside. Um, she and I were fighting at the Thanksgiving table a few years back, and I looked at her and I was like, well, you're just a legacy. And she pushed her chair back, walked away from the table, went downstairs and cried for two hours. So, sorry. And you're not. You are a wonderful sister and mother, and I love you. So, um, so Delta Gamma was just a really, really critical part of my support system at UND. And through the connections that I made and the confidence that I built, um, I was able to get involved in student government. And so. Um, while I was at UND, I actually ended up running for office, and I remember again that freshman year seeing posters of people running for student government and thinking like, oh, can you imagine running to be president of UND? And two years later, uh, me and Jordan Schutzel got a campaign together and ran and won. And so I got to spend a year, um, any of my student government nerds in here? Yeah. So, um, so it was wonderful and, and you know, I'm 15 years out from my undergrad degree and I still hearken back to the experiences that I had at student government um, as being so formative for, for teaching me the kind of work I love to do, to work with people, um, building consensus around an issue, um, identifying talents and abilities in other people and bringing a team of people together to make a difference. And so um, student government and working on the big event was one of, the, one of my first um, efforts at doing that and I was hooked. Um, and so some of those experiences I think gave me the confidence to continue on to law school and I went on to Pepperdine University in Malibu, California. And if you're going to go to law school in Malibu, you require a bit of confidence because <laughs> there's a bunch of celebrities running around at Starbucks and your, you know, fellow students went to Stanford and Princeton and I'm from North Dakota. So, um, but, you know, when I got to Pepperdine, I was exposed to these amazing professors that emulated what I grew up with my parents, uh, was seeing in my parents, which was people that were very intelligent, highly accomplished, but really focused on making a difference. Um, almost every single one of my professors at Pepperdine spent their summers doing human rights work internationally. And so through those professors, I learned about the issue of human trafficking um, and started doing research with one of my professors, spent a summer in Chiang Mai, Thailand, and then after I graduated from law school, um, did a fellowship with the Polaris Project in Washington, D.C., learning about how trafficking really impacted the United States domestically. So I was congratulated for my law degree and greeted with the global recession in 2008. And so um, I packed up my bags and I came home. And I was so fortunate to be from a place that had opportunities waiting for me when so many of my friends were struggling to get jobs and to use the degrees that they worked so hard to get. Um, so I was able to come back to North Dakota, clerk at the federal court, cut my teeth for a few years learning to be an attorney. And then in 2014, the Bush Foundation made an incredible um, investment in me and uh, took a chance on me to believe that I could make a difference um, in the emerging issue of human trafficking. Uh, the reason that I was able to come to North Dakota and have all these opportunities was that we had an oil boom going on in 2008, 2009 that kept our economy very healthy. But 
there was a flip side of that boom, which was an unprecedented stress on social services and a huge market for human trafficking in the Western oil fields. And so beginning in 2014, I partnered with our statewide domestic violence and sexual assault coalition, with our runaway homeless youth programs, and with fellow UND alum Wayne Stengem, who was an amazing support and help in this effort. And we worked together um, to raise, I believe we're around $6 million now since 2014 that we've raised to combat human trafficking in North Dakota. And in really exciting um, space too, you know, you come from a kind of unique context when you're in North Dakota. When I moved to California, everyone thought it was hysterical that I was from North Dakota, didn't know where it was. Thought it was even funnier that my entire family curled. I was the only one who wasn't a curler. My sister actually qualified for the Olympic trials in curling. So the year that I moved to LA, it was all over the Winter Olympics and people just everywhere were like, tell us about North Dakota, tell us about curling. Thought it was so funny, um, but I digress. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally off my train of thought at this point. Um, but uh, I really, when I look back on UND, I see that as the, the formative time in my life that allowed me to gain the confidence to take risks. And I look back at all the different things that I've been able to do, and that's really what the main factor was, was that I had learned at UND that if I put myself out there and if I believed I could make a difference, that people would listen and people would come alongside with me as long as I worked to honor them, uh, honor their contributions, work in a team environment. And that's really what we've done. So we've taken um, the money we've raised and we've built a direct service response system um, in North Dakota that's nationally recognized. And so um, I'm back on my train of thought now. Uh, North Dakota being kind of a unique situation and unique place, our experience with the oil boom and building a response to trafficking um, is now looked at nationally as an uh, uh, example of what to do to, to try to get ahead of the things we experience. So I've taken that experience now to Sioux Falls, uh, working there with Call to Freedom and many other organizations there. So I really feel like taking a chance on applying for the Bush Fellowship, taking a chance on going to Pepperdine, doing all these things, um, I never would have had the gumption to do any of it had I not had the opportunities that I got at the University of North Dakota, that I got through my networks at Delta Gamma and student government, and that I got from my wonderful family, friends, and um, loved ones. So I thank you so much for the honor of being here with you tonight. Uh, thank you to the University of North Dakota for everything you've done to me, or uh, done to me, done for me. <laughs> Sorry. It was going really well until that last little bit. Um, Anyway, uh, I just am I'm overwhelmed um, with gratitude. Thank you, and thanks to UND.